December, December 18th, I think. Maybe it's the 19th. Uh, Seattle, Washington. So it's really, really dark outside. Um, it's kind of rainy and gray and foggy. And my heart energy is feeling a little bit low. My physical energy is feeling a little bit low. And I had a beautiful walk with a friend yesterday. I have a very small quarantine and our quarantine. And he says to me, do you remember that bike ride we took this summer? And, it, and in Seattle, Washington, there was an area called the Chaz or the Chap, where it was a place of healing, but also a place of maybe violence. Uh, during the night in Capitol Hill, there was like shrines and things, and I hadn't gone through. And it was a beautiful day. Uh, in Seattle and we rode all around and he showed me the UW Washington campus because he went there and I'd never been and it's all these hills in Seattle so it was kind of a hard ride and my first ride out of the summer and we ended up at a Mexican restaurant outside eating chips and guacamole and there were no restaurants like open or maybe that was just starting to open again and we, I just had such gratitude that day gratitude for being able to have some sort of normal experience, um, to be with a friend, to be in my body, to be outside. And he goes, my bike got stolen. It's like, again, that was his second bike in Seattle that got stolen. And that happens a lot in Seattle. And I go, oh, I've had my bike for 18 years. And you know, I think we think about these objects. It could be a ring or it could be a plant or that are really dear to us and um, you know where they've been and I was thinking and you know what about this body that we have uh, and uh, this home it's been everywhere with us and the scars and the destruction and the healing powers it has for us um, and just the gratitude and for me a gratitude practice it was really, really beautiful, so I'm going to be focusing on gratitude um, for, for as long <laughs> as I need, probably through January, maybe February, um, but it's a really interesting practice. I've done it before, and you think, how can I think of a gratitude, a different gratitude every day? And you can, and it really is uplifting. Um, so today, let's move, and let's be really grateful for our bodies, and see what they can do and have a little fun. Okay. So in the morning, I really just start waking up the body, bending the spine gently in all the ways. And I have props around. Um, and I feel like I want to I wanna sit today standing standing feels kind of like a bit too much <laughs> for now i was standing to stand in a minute um you can put a blanket under your knees which is really really compassionate um our knees through our lives have been through a lot um you know i'm experiencing something in my right knee that's very different and i'm aware of um and some people have cartilage issues alignment issues, and these are, are very, very sensitive. And then you can sit back on your heels. You can do toes up, toes down. You can do a roll of some sort or a roller if you have a roller available to you or a rolled up towel um, under your ankles. Because your body's been through a lot and this should feel like a little stretch, but it should also feel comfortable. Let's be, let's be compassionate with our bodies and, and grateful for, you know, everywhere they've taken us. I'm going to take a block. It's nice to have handy. Um, a roller is nice to have handy. You can do this all with or without props. And we're just going to do a warm up. We're going to breathe our in, arms in and up. We're going to look up. We're going to press our palms. My fingers are not interlaced. If you can do it with them not interlaced, 
that's great. If not, you can interlace them, kind of like this. And maybe just reach up through your whole back. Chin slightly dipped, navel to spine. Feeling really weighted in your pelvis and equal, equally weighted. And just stretch up, stretch up through your forearms. Especially if you're doing a lot of computer work. Should feel really, really good. My triceps are on. My wrists are getting a stretch. My elbows are getting a stretch. You can take it down and you can roll your wrists right. Roll your wrists left. And then one more time. Breathe in and up and stretch, stretch, stretch through your back. Yeah. And then take a little breath in, or big breath in, and over to one side, really, really stretching, navel to spine, chin and chest lifted. Mm. Breathe back to center. Again, breathe in and up. And over. Chin and chest lifted. Your hands stay a little bit in front of your face. You don't want to go back into your back. You want to be abdominal. Mm. Breathe in and up. Yeah. Maybe some shoulder rolls. Move your chin with it. So releasing your neck and just being really gentle. Breathe your right arm up. And then over to the left. And you can have a block here. Have a block here. Keep your hand either to the side of you or in front of you and not back behind you. Again, to stay abdominal. And your arm can sweep across your face. You can give it a pull. <sighs> really open up the side body. Chin can go up and down. Relaxed fingertips. Should be energy out through them, but they shouldn't be tension. You can push in the arm that's down. That feels really good to me. And round your chin and your chest down to the ground. Sucking in your stomach. You might even feel this in your hips. You're going to feel it wherever you're tight. But you're really pushing through the hand that's grounded into the lat. You should feel that engagement. And tricep is on. Hand flattened to the floor. And then breathe. Slowly in and up. And it's a chest opener. You can take a few circles. Hmm. Other side. With your arm up. Over. You can use the block if you like. Hand down, fingertip variations, lats on, and side bend to any degree that takes you a little deeper. Stomach in, navel to spine. Mm, this should feel good. Mm. If you want to, you can pull a little bit. Mm -hmm. mm. Really grounding into the hand that's down, lats on. You can take a little chin side to side, shake your head no. Circles with your chin. Oh, it feels good, releases the neck. Other direction. Small circles, big circles, gentle circles, slow circles. Breathe in and up. Yeah, you can. Stretch your fingers, yeah. both sides, your wrists. Then we're going to come onto our hands and our knees. I'm going to draw my armpits together as if I'm, as if I'm squeezing something together, like a pillow or a block. And you might even want to try that with a block if you have one available. Yeah, the block might be a little too narrow. So I'm squeezing my armpits together, index 
fingers are forward and feel as if I'm opening jars externally and that's really supporting my shoulder gir girdle, my lats are on and I can take some cat cows, breathe in and up, really opening the throat and exhaling navel to spine inhaling take a few more rounds right there in center just feeling where your center is your knees can be six inches apart, hip width, insertion width, or together, depending on just what feels good to you and where your flexibility is at. And then make this sort of your practice. This is like some intuitive movement of what you need today. How can this be fun for you? Again, setting up same way. And then make it your own. For me, this hip stirring feels really, really good. My knees are connected, my feet are connected. I'm just rocking back and forth. Getting a stretch along my tensors and my seat, my navels to my spine. I come in and up. And then I like to stir it back around. Looking up, looking down, extension, looking up. Mm. Really breathing, opening the front of the body, squeezing my armpits together. You don't want to be dropping. Yeah. Knitting my lower ribs in. And if it feels good to you, you can take a toe stretch. That might be kind of extreme for a lot of people. If it doesn't feel good, if it feels like too much, don't do it. But you can also tuck your toes. And then whatever amount gives you a little bit more length, a little more flexion, take it. You can try to stay in it. Just enjoy that that foot stretch. You can go into the body anywhere and in the morning gently stretching your feet, your hands, your wrists can feel really good. You can take some cat cows sitting back on your feet. If this isn't good for your toes. So you can have a pillow, a roller. You can still be taking that cat cow motion without any weight on your body, which I find is really beautiful. So breathing out, breathing in, out. You might be able to get a stretch along your quadriceps. Yeah. Take this where you wanna go. So now we're, we're just in the center here slower the better with your breath. Again, bind your hands behind you. You can come up. The roller's really nice because then you can take some side bends. You can rotate your chest down. Breathing out. Breathing in. This is really great for computer work because you're really opening up your shoulders, your shoulder girdle, your chest, down around. And the range of motion for you is going to be different than the range of motion for me and for everyone else this is your body you know it get to know it more every day 
Mm. And then really, really good for computer workers. We can clasp our fingers again and press out through our heels. This is again, angry cat, no, happy cat, angry cat, angry cat. Really breathe into the space you're opening up in your upper back. Move your head side to side. There's some intuition here. Circles. Yes and no. And then breathe up. And a stretch up. And release down. Let's stand. Are we ready for standing? I think we're ready for standing. In the morning, standing poses are really, really gentle because your pelvis has, you know, just more places to go because it's not being held to the floor. Big toes parallel in the center of my ankles. And my ankles are just like, my heels are out just a little bit, right? Foot placement's just as important as hand placement. And then we're just gonna stand for a minute. We're gonna locate our pubic bone and our hip bones and our navel to spine and posture. Not out here, not in here. It's just the littlest chin tuck. And maybe you even can touch the top of your head as if you this energy coming out the top of it, all right? And then strong thighs. Our upper quads tend to get a little weak. Our adductors, our inner thighs tend to get a little weak um, just from life, from moving, yeah, from not being a child and playing on playground equipment anymore. And for me, since I'm right-handed, my right seat tends to be a little bit weak, so I'm always thinking about standing with integrity in my right seat. That's got to be on. We all have these little corks in our body. How can we use these poses to balance a little bit more? So from here, it's available to you. Stomach in, soft bend in your knee, and then come forward. You can have blocks, yeah. So this is almost a beginning of a downward dog. It's really wide and you can come down any amount. Release your knees as much as you want. A lot of people th think that they have really short hamstrings, and that can be true, but a lot of times it's tight calves and a tight pelvis. So the more you bend your knees, no problem here. Navel to spine really supports this. Strong upper quads pushing back into the hamstrings, and you can even hold your hamstrings and pull your hamstrings, which could feel pretty nice. It's our first forward bolt bend of the day. If it's available to you, you can, you can grab your heels. You can relax your upper body forward. And just have a gentle pull. You want to be a really, really weighted in your pelvis. Equally, again, for me, it's a lot about pushing into that right foot, right seat, foot alignment, and just breathing here and enjoying it. Asking for a little bit more weight in your pelvis. You can take little bounces even, just to relax the seat mus muscles. A lot of time our upper seat is very tight. Yeah. Feeling weighted in your heels. Your toes should be really, really relaxed. Yeah. Mm. And then just to play with this a little bit more, we'll be here another few minutes, is now we can walk out our hands to a downward dog. Again, it's that same engagement of pulling our armpits together, index fingers forward, fingers spread wide, this motion of, energetic motion of thinking that as you're pressing into the ground, you're opening jars externally, and you're really creating a lot of traction here. Your legs are strong. You have a subtle bend in your knee. And you're just feeling that nice length through your back. And your navel to your spine is supporting this all. You can look up. You can let your head hang. Breathing your lower ribs in. 
Then walk your hands in, depending where you are. You can have a block, you can be on your fingertips. You wanna be parallel, you want your torso to be parallel. Plant your left hand in the center, index finger forward, leg strong, stomach in, and twist any amount. This is your body, it doesn't have to be a big twist. And then another trick is you can internally rotate your shoulder. You can put your hand on your sacrum so you can feel that it's flat. You don't want to be here. You don't want to be switching in your hips. You want your hips to really be level, quad strong, reaching up, sucking in, knitting in those floating ribs. And the head can look down if that's more comfortable. I'm really pushing through my feet, my planted hand, and looking up, chin and chest, looking up. And then breathe down, switch hands. Maybe unlock your knees again, Make sure, check in with your feet, push through the other hand internally rotate the shoulder. You can feel the flatness of your sacrum with your other hand. Mm -hmm. Navel to spine, knitting in the floating ribs, and then to any degree, twist. And this side should feel different. This is not my good side. Okay, it's a good side, but it's my less flexible side going left. So again, I'm really, really pushing in to my hand, to my feet, through my seat, and the engagement of my quads. Really strong legs. Head can go down, head can go up and down. And this is a twist. Yeah. Pushing through that arm. And then breathing down. And one more time, just in the center. Hmm. You can stay here. Really relax into it. If it's available to you, you can take your left hand to your right heel. Again, strong legs. Take a twist here. Chin and chest lifted. Strong quads. Micro bend in the knees stomach in. <sighs> you might be getting a shoulder stretch, a lat stretch in your left arm and then breathe to center, exhale, right hand to left heel. Again, you can keep feeling your sacrum and the balance of your sacrum. Legs strong and twist up. You can really pull and use your back to help twist. Navel to spine, reaching up. Head down, if your head down is more comfortable, do that. Little rotations, this is your practice. Hmm. Your pelvis should probably be opening up a little bit more now in the forward bend. So we've been here a long time. It's tricky. It's tricky. We move the upper body to just, you know, let the stability form in the lower body. One last hand position. You can walk your hands through your legs, really pressing down through your back, through your triceps, through your hands, and enjoying that. If you feel like you could go a little bit deeper, you can heel toe your feet in and get a little more length. Micro bend in the knees, navel to spine, pressing into the hands, triceps, triceps, triceps. Yeah, keep trying to bring your pelvis forward, weight in the middle of your feet. You can look up, you can look 
down. Whew, that felt good. Good forward fold. One last time. Coming forward here. If it feels good to you, you can clasp your hands behind you. Open your chest. Look up, up, up. Yeah. I keep checking in with the bend in my knees, my navel being drawn in, and then I straighten up again from the strength of my quads. My triceps are active in this pose. I like a little neck release, a little left, right. And you can even take a little left, right twist here. Exhale. Inhale, center. Exhale, other side. Micro bend in your knees. Then we're gonna do right foot out, left foot in. Then we're gonna take a triangle pose. Yeah. I like my heels on a plumb line for this pose. They can be a little bit wider for stability. You can have a block under your hand. That's where you feel centered. We're really trying to get weighted on both legs equally. Again, I like to internally rotate my shoulder here, navel to spine, floating ribs knitted in, arm up, and lift your chin and chest. Yeah, it's really about being nice and deep in your hip. If it feels okay to push through your heel to get that depth in your hip, it can be kind of nice. And it's almost as if your knees are rotating in on each other. Have a nice little release in the back leg knee. Yeah, left and back seat on, and then open any amount. Come to center, left foot out, right foot in. Again, totally different side. <sighs> it's not my good side, but it's a different spot side. It's still a good side. Thank you, body. <laughs> still a good side. Yeah, so I like to get a little bit um, of hamstring extension, really get deep in my left hip navel to spine. I don't know that I can say it enough. I feel like I always need reminded, so I'm going to remind going to remind you all as well. Yeah. Yeah. Hand down, release the back knee, strong back seat and up. Yeah. It's a twist. Chin and chest lifted. And breathe. Mm. Come to center. Heel toe. Heel toe your feet in. Gently release your knees and roll yourself to standing. Mm. Feel little gentle shoulder rolls. A lot of forward bending. So to release, we'll do a final back bend. Um, I think that uh, should come down. Take a final pose with a bridge pose. It's a great one to do in the morning, and there's lots of variations. I definitely like to use block. You can use a pillow, you can use a blanket, um, but a block between your upper thighs, your feet can be together. They can be six inches, uh, whatever feels right to you. But we'll do, we'll do this one in stages. And it'll really, for me, it really writes my pelvis, it really engages my adductors. And so we're going to go really slow with this one. 
We're going to have a bit of a uh, pelvic neutral, right? So there should be a little mouse house under your back, navel to spine. Squeezing, squeezing the block. Your heels are pretty close to you. You might be able to touch them. If not, that's okay. It's okay. And we're going to start really slow. Our floating ribs are going to stay on the mat. I'm going to squeeze the block. And then I'm just going to roll my pelvis up. My seat's just a couple inches off the ground. But I'm squeezing the block. And I'm already shaking. This engages your seat, this engages your adductors, it brings you to the center of your legs. This right here, if you did it every morning for balance, it's so good. Squeezing the block gives you a little more length on your inner line as well. This is the best. I don't know if you can see me shaking, but I'm shaking. The more I suck my stomach in, the better. Oh yeah. I'm really pushing through my heels. My seat is on. And you could hang out here a while. I'm already shaking. And I'm not going to make us stay here that long. <laughs> now we're going to roll up into a bridge pose where it's just like plank. We have our hip bones and our ribs in one line. Okay. And keep squeezing that block. And again, for me, I'm thinking about driving from my right foot, my right seat, to balance my pelvis, right? You should be able to look up and you should see pubic bone, hip bones, rib ribs, all in one line. If you're not there yet, you'll get there. Keep squeezing that block and asking for extension on your hip flexors. If it's available to you, you can then roll your shoulders underneath your back. You can clasp your hands. We're still really pushing through my feet. And now we're getting a back bend. We're getting a chest opener. And I'm asking for my sternum to open. Strongly pushing through my seat, through my heels, and just getting a little, a little bit more. Yeah. Still squeezing that block. And this is a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Yeah. If it's available to you and you want to take a wheel pose, you can. All right, so we're already kind of set up for it. You just put your hands back. I like to go up onto my toes just as I get into this, especially, you know, it's the morning. My back's not fully open. Release my neck a little bit. And then I think about where my big toes are. Are they parallel? Think about pushing into my inner lines of my hands into my thumbs, my inner ankles extending down, and just kind of letting go. My butt is on, and then pushing from my seat, from my heels, into my chest. And slowly coming down. Attitude. That was amazing. All right. If you have a few minutes, you must have a few minutes. Or at least one minute or two minutes. Let's set up for a Shavasana. You know, the compassion for our bodies for working so hard. I like something under my knees. You can do pillows, you can do legs out, you can just do straight legs. This feels really, really good to me. You could have a block under your upper back, opening the chest a little bit more and just breathing some space in there. You can dim your lights. You can find some quiet into your house. Quiet is so good. Hmm. You can 
take your right hand on your heart, left hand on your belly, both hands on your belly, or extend the hands out, maybe even have pillows underneath if that feels good. So as you're comfortable. If you don't have a lot of time, give yourself 10 slow, smooth, deep breaths, a gift. Breathing in all the fresh, the new. Exhaling, releasing the stagnant, what meant, what's meant to go, let it go. Mm. Having gratitude for the time that you've spent taking care of yourself, your home, connecting to your body. Having gratitude for something, someone in your life, your cat, your dog. Or just you, just grateful for, sh not just, showing up for you. Hmm. Namaste.